With the Advent Authority laying low, we once again focused our efforts on reinforcing our global communication grid. It was going to take the rest of the week to finish our second tower in North America, so I spent some time catching up on the latest reports. The spokesman had just sent us our latest progress report, and honestly, it was almost embarrassing how successful we had been over the past few weeks. The report included a veritable laundry list of our accomplishments, while Advent hadn't managed to accomplish anything at all. Not that Blightwalker was ever willing to accept these public defeats with any semblance of grace. The latest message he had sent us was just the usual array of vague, nonspecific threats. Still, the rest of our reports painted a somewhat clearer picture. Blightwalker was pushing for the usual assortment of upgrades for his peacekeepers, but he was also implementing a new plan to deliberately spread chrysalid infections all over the world. Atlas had suggested that the Blightwalker's repeated visits to his alien resurrection pod might be taking a toll on his mind, and now I was starting to agree. Blightwalker had clearly gone insane. It was going to be at least a few more days before our covert ops team checked in, so in the meantime, we finished construction on our latest radio tower, and then moved on to the location for our next one. This time we were headed to New Brazil. As the construction teams began laying the groundwork for our new project, I headed down to the research labs to check in with Tygen. He had already finished his research on the Andromedan, and, as I had suspected, his interest had primarily been in the mechanized suit, rather than its inhuman occupant. While the technology was too advanced for him to fully comprehend, he had at least reverse-engineered a new type of proximity explosive that our soldiers would now be able to use in the field. I was eager to have our research team begin studying the Avatar, but Tygen insisted that we needed to finish studying the rest of the data we had acquired first. We had captured several Advent data pads over the past year, so I reluctantly gave Tygen permission to start work on having them all decrypted. Soon afterwards, the spokesman contacted us with another target of opportunity. Once again, Advent was moving a valuable prisoner to one of their liquidation centers, so that meant that we had a narrow window of opportunity to acquire both a new recruit and some more valuable intel. We would be hitting an Advent containment facility in Bangalore, which meant we were going to be up against at least a few armored units. Since this was likely to turn into a brutal firefight, I put Mox in charge of the strike team, and he was quick to fill the squad with some of our most efficient killers. Joey and Blackbane were core members of our covert ops team. They would be the first to go in to pinpoint the prisoner's location. Then Mox would come in with the rest of the squad, Karn, the Beast, and the Hunter-Killer, and they would kill everything but the person we were there to rescue. It seemed a bit excessive, but Mox insisted that it was a necessary precaution, and the rest of his squad enthusiastically agreed. It was only then that I realized my mistake. I had just allowed Mox to assemble a squad full of blood cultists. But we were on the clock and there wasn't time to assemble a new strike team. If we wanted a chance to rescue that Advent prisoner, then Mox was going to be the one to do it. I just had to hope that he remembered to bring Dr. Halverson back in one piece. Advent is holding a VIP of some value to the Resistance. The spokesman has asked us to move in and attempt a rescue operation. We're expecting heavy resistance at the site, and the aliens have had extensive air support moving in that region that'll keep Firebrand grounded. Lock down the area, eliminate all hostile contacts, and secure the VIP. We have a confirmed location for the VIP. Move to rendezvous. Eliminate all hostile contacts. We are quiet by nature. Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome back to episode 47. Today we're on yet another VIP rescue mission. We need to fight our way into that Advent containment facility, rescue the VIP, and then escort them to the evac zone. Hmm. There's an Advent pod in the building right beneath us. They can't actually see us just yet, but that's definitely going to make things a little more awkward. 
Michael. We're still going to move the entire squad up onto the rooftop. We just need to be careful about where we move so we don't accidentally trigger that pod before we're ready. Rolling art. As usual, we are on a time limit. It just won't actually start counting down until Advent knows we're here. Well, even though we don't know exactly where that Andromedan is, it's nice that we can still kind of track it by the property damage it's causing. Okay, we're going to circle our squad wide around the outer edge of the roof and start moving towards the containment facility. Once we reach the far edge of the building, we'll probably see at least one or two advent pods down at street level. We'll focus on taking them out, and at some point during that firefight, the Andromedan pod underneath us will probably come to investigate. Then we can take them out as well. Let's just try to make sure none of our operatives do anything weird here, like jumping through skylights or otherwise giving away our position. Alright, we've got a sectopod in sight. Fortunately, those things aren't nearly as bad as they look. Their turret can be dangerous, but most of the time they just end up wasting their actions, changing elevation levels, or charging up their wrath cannon. It also helps that, at this point, we can pretty reliably stun those things with haywire. Hmm. We've got a bit of lag here. I hope the game's not freezing up again. Okay, there we go. Oh, and uh, there's that Andromedan making a Kool-Aid Man-style entrance. Looks like he's got a couple of sectoids with him. Haven't seen those things in a while. Hmm, that sectopod is headed this way too. And it's got a decent number of soldiers following it. Well, it's going to be a lot trickier to move around without being spotted now. We've got visual on six enemies and... Hmm... I'm pretty sure there's a sectoid in this corner here, too. Yeah, we can't move into that space, so that's definitely where the sectoid is standing. Wow. Okay. I don't think we can actually risk moving any of our guys at all. You can see the warning zones all along the edge of the building. If we move into any of those spaces, they'll automatically spot us. Hmm. We do have a small number of options here. At the very least, we can move Karn over here into a better position, without triggering any of the enemy pods. Moving out. Let's go ahead and consolidate the whole squad over towards this corner of the building here. Then we'll set them all on Overwatch, just in case they get spotted during the alien turn. Those enemy pods are actually standing pretty close to each other. This might be a good time to start our attack against them, but I'd be more comfortable if we were standing in more defensive positions. Well, Blackbane is going to be using his blaster bomb anyway, so he doesn't need line of sight. Let's just check to see what our other guys can do before we commit ourselves to an attack. Ah, 
All right, I think I've got a good idea of what I'm going to do here, so let's pull Blackbane back behind this cover and we'll get things started. We can hit a decent number of them with a single blaster bomb, but the radius isn't wide enough to cover all of them. I guess our best bet is to focus on hitting the units that have armor. Though I might actually be able to hit that sectoid that's hiding in the corner as well. Can't hide from this one! Now that was satisfying. We're spotted. Okay, we're in it now. We've got seven hostiles on the field, so I think the first thing we need to do is have Karn trim down their numbers a bit. He should actually be able to kill a lot of these guys with his pistol. Let's just make sure he places his attacks properly. Okay, here we go. Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Skull Throne. Target's neutralized. Wow. In uh, retrospect, I think that was actually even more satisfying than the blaster bomb. Okay, that knocked all the soft targets off the battlefield, but we've still got two armored units down there. Let's start moving our guys into better position so we can take them out. This unit is relatively There they are. Let's tap the overdrive button and peel off some more of that armor. I was hoping to hit them both with the Shred Storm Cannon, but the awkward angle means I could only hit one target. We'll just start by focusing fire on the Sectopod. Nice. Now let's bring some of the other operatives down to keep firing on the sectopod. That thing's going to explode once we take it out, so hopefully that will strip off the rest of the Andromedan's armor. I do have some reservations about moving our guys down to ground level. There's at least one or two more enemy pods running around, so this might end up triggering one of them. Well, I guess we'll worry about that if it happens. Let's just keep things moving here. Hmm, so far so good. Let's keep moving people into position, then we'll take out that sectopod. I strike out for my kill. 
Okay, that took out the sectopod. Unfortunately, the Andromedan wasn't close enough to take any damage from the explosion. Let's just have Mox lock it down with his frost bomb. We'll worry about it next turn. Two cores and a superior auto loader. Not bad. Got the goods. Fire's getting close here. Things are still pretty quiet, so let's spend this turn taking out the Andromedan. Seems doable. That takes care of its armor. Now we can bring Karn down and he can finish off the pilot with his pistol. On the move. Let's uh, actually take a moment to move all of our guys around real quick. That way we can adjust our strategy if we accidentally set off another pod. Speaking of which... Okay, we've got an advent pod in sight. Looks pretty standard, though. An officer, a lancer, and a purifier. The Andromedan is locked down for another turn or two, so let's focus on taking these other guys out first. I hope it's working. This is a risky move, but hopefully Dr. Halverson's not standing too close to the edge of his cell. We didn't immediately fail the mission, so that's a good sign. Let's have Kazador hit these guys with her Shredstorm cannon. That takes care of the whole pod, but instead of attacking the Andromedan, let's just set Joey on Overwatch. That way we'll disrupt its turn if it ends up thawing out. There we go. VIP is secure and mobile. Menace 15 status confirmed. VIP is in tow. Proceed to the extraction point. Okay, the VIP just went active, so let's have her immediately start moving towards the evac zone. We're probably going to be seeing enemy reinforcements, so let's move the rest of the squad up with her, too. We'll finish off the Andromedan shell once everyone's in position. I'm going. I'm going. On my way. Physical exertion outpoint. There 
we go. Not too shabby. Now let's just bring Karn up and we can set everyone into Overwatch. Moving to position. Some gets off. Surely there's a more no, difficult task available. There's the reinforcement marker. Minus one five, we're picking up an enemy transport inbound on your current position. First things first, let's get the VIP out of here. The VIP is under my protection. I will go. Now we'll just move the rest of the squad towards the evac zone and get them set up for an ambush. This should be pretty quick. No problem, boss. On your order. Good copy. Moving on target. I'm as graceful as a gazelle. Got it covered. Sounds like a job. Under fire into Overwatch. Scanning. Got it covered. Okay, the priest is sustained and the mech is on overwatch, but I think I can neutralize both of them in one move. Check this out. That knocks the mech off overwatch, and when the priest comes out of stasis, the beast should theoretically kill him with Bladestorm. Whatever you say. Now we'll just keep moving up towards the evac zone, and someone will finish off the mech when they get the chance. You know, we still have that cell door over there. Let's have Joey take a look at that. I'm on it. Moving to designated position. Doors or containers leading to objectives often have special high-end rewards, so it's definitely worth checking out. Oh, wow. And I am glad I took the time to hack this door because it just got Joey a ridiculous bonus to his hacking skill. I think that actually just made him the best hacker on our team. We're through. Now we'll set our guys on Overwatch, just in case the Beast doesn't take out that priest. There you go. Alright, I think we're done here. Let's just get everyone into the evac zone. Already there. Got it covered. It feels good to move around. Shoot, I think I just... Yeah, Karn is one space outside of the evac zone. Moving there. 
I like how Joey just had to go through the skylight. Can't say I really blame him. I'd probably do that too if I had rocket boots. We've still got a scanning tower, so let's check that out real quick. Oh, well, that's convenient. I guess we missed an entire pod. And despite the destruction left in their wake, XCOM refuses to let go of the ways of the old world. They will continue their wanton and reckless crimes until the entire world burns around them. We are grateful to the Elders for their support in ending this menace once and for all. The soldier that joined us from the Resistance is certainly a quick study, having already surpassed some of our other soldiers' capabilities. No promotions, as usual. Well, good work, everyone. Unsurprisingly, Mox and his team cut right through the Advent facility like a hot knife through butter. What was a bit surprising was the fact that they had also managed to bring Dr. Karen Halverson back alive. I spent a brief moment congratulating Mox for a job well done, smiled and nodded while Karn went on about the blessings of the Blood God, and then joined Bradford as he debriefed our newest recruit. Again, we didn't really need another engineer aboard the Avenger, but Dr. Halverson apparently had several suggestions on how to improve our operation, so I told her to go ahead and write up a list. Afterwards, work resumed on our communication tower in New Brazil, though we did make a brief stop at the black market to barter for some Illyrium crystals. We were going to need those to finish upgrading our armory. A few days later, we finally received word from Naz and his team. Where our other operatives had failed, Naz had succeeded. His incredible psychic powers had allowed him to successfully track Blightwalker back to Asia, where our covert ops team had discovered another alien outpost. I ordered Naz and the others to return to the Avenger as soon as possible, to minimize the chance that Blightwalker would spot them. We were going to need to spend some time preparing for our next move. But now that we knew where the hunter lived, his days were numbered.